the Parliamentary Secretary for Financial Services, Digital Economy and Innovation considers the impact of this thriving industry on the blockchain island. The Honourable Silvio Schembri, Government of Malta. Good morning, everyone. Honourable Prime Minister, CEO, Dave Police, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. A wise man once said that time flies and it's up to you to be the navigator. And it seems that in keeping with the nature of this high-flying sector, we have navigated and covered a lot of ground in a short period of time since the first edition of this very first summit. Operators, investors, and why not, consumers, welcome again to the blockchain island, which I have to say is slightly different than the one you visited on the 1st of November. That day was a landmark moment for our country. We managed to write history by being the first jurisdiction in the world to establish a holistic regulatory framework, as explained also by the Prime Minister, which regulates this sector. On that day, both the MFSA and the MDIA rolled up their sleeves to identify, respectively, diverse VFA agents and the system auditors, the pillars which are certain credibility and the satisfactory function of this emergent sector. It is now widely acknowledged that a Maltese license is one which begets a certain amount of prestige to those operators, businesses and investors who make the grade and acquire such a license. Applications are now being processed through the system auditors that will act as the bridge between the operators and the MDIA. And I'm informed that just today, more system auditors have been approved by the Malta Digital Innovation Authority. These are responsible for undertaking audits on innovative technology arrangements in order to ensure that the standards by the NDIA and the MFSA are adhered to according to their arrangements. It is also their responsibility to maintain and oversee the technology arrangements, intervene in response to critical matters and notify the authority on the material changes. Operators and companies operating in virtual financial assets in and from Malta will have to obtain a license from the Malta Financial Service Authority for their operations. To this end, the virtual financial asset agents will act as the buffer between the authority and the industry. VFA agents are responsible for the preliminary due diligence on the issuer or company dealing with virtual currencies and the preparation of the necessary application form. In other words, both the system auditors and VFA agent will act as the gatekeepers of the industry, ensuring that the whole process is carried out in a transparent and timely manner, fostering the much coveted certainty and peace of mind, which is sometimes lacking within this sector. But it is not only certainty and peace of mind which elevates Malta as the jurisdiction of choice for operators within this industry. There is another crucial and all-important element which has propelled our country to the forefront, and this is unquestionable our diverse pool of talent. I have just had the privilege of attending a ceremony at the University of Malta wherein 19 students, which hail from diverse backgrounds, being it law, business and finance and ICT, were awarded new scholarship grants to pursue a master's degree in DLT. This initiative and others of the same ilk fully complement our vision of upskilling today's existing workforce, as well as encouraging newcomers to this exciting new emergent sector. However, we cannot rest on our laurels, for investment in our human capital is what ultimately gives us the edge over other competing jurisdictions. We will strive to continue sustaining our talent pool, and to this end, I appeal all to all of you here today to work closely together and share your valuable expertise and knowledge in an industry that is growing fast and is already impacting our lifestyle. There is a fast evolving digital revolution happening as we speak. And therefore, it is inevitable that the exciting ch chapter our country has embarked upon will not stop at the blockchain. 
we have set our sights upon exploring and conquering other sectors such as artificial intelligence. The Malta.ai task force has just recently launched, launched with the aim of formulating a holistic AI strategy, firmly placing Malta amongst the first 10 nations and top 10 nations in the world which can boast a strategy for this sector. Ultimately, Malta aspires to become the quintessential jurisdiction wherein local and foreign companies and entrepreneurs can develop, prototype, test, and then scale AI, and ultimately showcase the value from their innovations across an entire nation primed for adoption. Our ambition is to create the conditions for AI to then springboard them from Malta to the world. Malta has proved time and again that its size does not matter and it does not hinder our ambitions and now the time is ripe to cast our aspirations to, to last great innovational frontier. And that is space. It is to this end that we have launched Malta's vision for a national space strategy, which for the very first time ever, we will be looking seriously at exploring the commercial potential related to space and which will ultimately seek to attract space, com space commercialization exploration and innovative development initiatives to Malta. We also need to rigorously explore the economic niche presented by esports, video gaming and game development, and how these could be incorporated in our already strong ecosystem. Currently, we are looking at formulating a holistic strategy, which we have just launched yesterday, where Malta could serve as a hub for this industry. A strategy which will also identify the ideal incentives and skills required, as well as establishing a new niche within a tourism sector. Operators in this space are already looking into using the services provided by Malta in order to, to tap European markets. In our drive to facilitate such ventures, a memorandum of understanding was signed yesterday between ESL, the largest Sport esports organization in the world and the government of Malta through the Malta Gaming to Gaming Malta Foundation. The memorandum of understanding will serve as an intent for both parties to develop a multi year program to help the development of local grassroots esports ecosystem, the organization of local and international events, as well as the sharing of expertise in this sector. This serves as a clear confirmation that un our uninstinting commitment and continuous nurturing of this fledging industry is what makes Malta the natural choice for investors and for them to become the main contributors for Malta's economic growth. We have journeyed far, way beyond what was deemed possible, a journey which we managed to put Malta at the forefront of this technological revolution. However, there is still a lot to be done. We are very aware of the stumbling blocks businesses and operators face when setting up shops in Malta. And from here, I extend my heartfelt appeal to banks to adapt and adopt the necessary process to accommodate this new emergent industry. That said, it is good to note that applications from banks which cater for these businesses are now being processed by the Malta Financial Services Authority. Finally, I would like to thank everyone involved in the organization of this highly significant summit, particularly Amman Police, for his continuous effort in promoting Malta as the ultimate choice for investors in this space. Thank you, and I wish you all an interesting and rewarding event.